Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Bus Force. This is video two, and today we're talking about the equalizer module down on the bottom left here. So let's go to a new preset, so we're all starting off at the same point. And for this demonstration, let's go ahead and mute the saturation path by selecting this mute button. Let's unmute the dry path. Let's select the equalizer, and we need to dra drag this all the way to Unity. You can double click it, and it'll go to zero. And let's listen to see what we're gonna be working with today. Okay, so we have our signal going through. It sounds basically dry. So the reason I say that is because it's coming in here for this from this diagram, and then it's getting processed by the EQ module only, and then going to our dry path. It is going to these other paths here, but as you can see, these are muted, these two over here and over here. So basically, we're only just listening to the dry path here, only getting processed through the EQ, which is down over here. So for complete completeness sake, we can always disable the filter, the compressor, and the saturation, just to be sure. We don't have to, but it's just kind of good practice to know where all these switches are. So looking at this EQ, right? So like in the last video, I said, we have three bands and to us nowadays that might seem kind of limiting, right? Because we have EQs, digital EQs that have lots of bands, lots of opportunities to change things, a lot of different curves and so on and so forth. So looking at something like this with only three bands, we might feel that it's a little bit limiting. But the cool part about that is, is that we have all these different types of curves that are modeled from the Pultec EQs, which makes it sound really, really, really good. So sometimes having a little bit of something gives us a little bit better result in the end. So for example, let's kind of go through these over here. So at the very bottom, these three knobs here are going to be for each different band. And this is going to be where we choose our frequency that we want to target. Now above these three is going to be the gain, either reduction or boosting the, uh, EQ curve that we set or the EQ point that we set down over here. And then these top knobs over here are going to be the curves, right? So the first EQ band is going to be a low shelf. So let's take a look at that and kind of just listen to see what it sounds like. So right now we're going to be targeting about 150 and this is where it comes by default. Generally, there's a lot of mud between 100 to 200 hertz. So you can kind of use that as a good wiggle room for this, for this band here. Although keep in mind, this goes all the way up to 30 K, which is just insane. So yeah, if we double click this back to 150, let's maybe increase this to maybe like 160 or something kind of like that. And let's take a listen and change some, uh, some settings here. So we're going to increase a little bit of gain here. Okay, now right there, I, I do want to bring your attention to this right here. So this curve is very important here. So this point right over here on our graph is going to be targeting 160 hertz. Now, if you didn't have a curve, it's just going to be a linear boost, kind of just pushing that low end up. But as soon as we start adding this curve, what happens is even though we are boosting, this curve actually makes us cut this mud down over here that I generally pull out on a lot of patches, which is really nice about this type of EQ, because you're kind of almost doing two things with one knob, right? We're reducing some of that mud, but at the same time, we're also increasing some of that really low end rich signal that we actually like. So kind of take a listen to that kick and how much it, it punches out much more when we're adding maybe like five deeps, 5.6 deeps of, of gain, which is kind of a lot, but this is more so as a, as a demonstration to kind of show you how this curve affects the sound here. So here's no EQ. Because we can see this kick lives right around in here, and we're actually giving some boost to this kick here, which is this boost that we're doing down over here. But at this little curve, we're kind of taking out some of that mud. So it's like I said, it's doing two things at once to really shape your sound, removing that mud that maybe we don't really like, and then also giving some nice extra bump over there at the uh, at the low end. And with this curve, we can really exaggerate it to something like this and really have a dip there. But this is kind of a drastic move over here. So kind of keep in mind, and these curves are really what's kind of the uh, the meat and potatoes of this type of EQ. So moving on from this band here, we have the center band. So this is going to be a peaking or a bell type of EQ. So this over here is labeled as present. So with this, we can kind of think of this like we're, we're kind of targeting a clarity kind of spot of our track or maybe our bus or whatever we're sending through this. So let's see if we can get some clarity out of this track here. So we're going to go maybe one, two K around there. And 
then we can always widen the um, the width here. So this is going to become default in the center, but we can always tighten the queue, and then we can always open up the queue if we want to have something more broad. Okay, so now let's work a little bit on the top end here. So the top end is basically going to be very similar to the low shelf, but we're just going to be using a high shelf. And it's kind of similar with the curves here. So as we increase this gain here, right, let's go kind of farther away and take a look at how this curve changes as well. So it's kind of doing the same thing as the other one was doing. So if we double click this part back to zero, we can kind of see how this curve of the high shelf is really kind of dipping in first, and then it's giving a rise here. And if we have it all the way to the left, it's more so a linear curve. So this is kind of cool because what we can do is we can take away some of that really harshness in our track something that's kind of pokey maybe one two three k or even maybe above that into 4k that's kind of just ear piercing we can use this shelf as a as a reduction of that of that frequency spot and then also increase the top end to kind of give us that airy that kind of just breathy you know if you if you, if you get your fingers and then you kind of rub your index and your thumb right next to your ears that type of frequency sound is going to be what we're kind of aiming to push with this type of band here so let's start from the uh, from the center one the bell and then let's move on to the the uh, high shelf and let's see how that affects our signal here So it's kind of like something in this track. So over kind of here, we're kind of losing a good amount of the very, very top end. So we don't really need to do such a drastic curve because what's going to happen is we're going to lose too much of that of that present sound. And then we're going to be pushing something that's not really there. So it really depends on the track that you have. But I do want you to be aware that these curves play a significant, significant thing or concept sound in our EQ here. So let's go a little bit later in the track here and kind of see what that's going to sound like. So take a listen to how different this sounds. So this is only using three bands, two of them being shelving and one of them being just a peaking and you get quite a different tonality and it sounds really nice actually. So here's gonna be dry without the EQ and then we're gonna pop in the EQ and see the difference of what we're listening to. So yeah, that's basically just a quick demonstration of the EQ. It sounds very good, and I highly suggest to play around with this. It might seem, like I said in the beginning, a little bit limiting with three different bands, but you're going to be surprised at how good this thing can sound if you're sending a group of vocals through it, maybe a drum bus, maybe some guitars or something like that. Maybe it's just a master track or something like that, because that's more so the intention of this type of plugin is to use it as a bus compressor, bus EQ, bus filter, bus saturation, but it has all of those modules built into one, which makes it a bus processor so parallel processor at that and we're going to get into that a little bit later so yeah hopefully you learned something and in the next video we're going to be talking about the filter here and why this is actually so cool to have in a plugin so uh yeah we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching